Now, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. And we're kicking off with a look at the big stories on the front pages of the newspaper today. And joining us to analyze this is Jide Johnson, who's a chief lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Good morning, sir, and thanks for joining us. Good morning, and it's a pleasure to be with you. Good morning to our viewers all over the world. Good morning. All right, let's uh, begin with the Punch newspaper. It says, Northern Elders. Kuka, Obi, others warn of another civil war. Nigeria's daily oil production sinks to 1.17 million barrels. FG bans overcrowding, assemblies, others as school resumes Monday. 96 firms bid to repair NNPC pipelines terminals. Can defense Kuka demands arrest of people threatening Bishop. Police bust Ogun drug syndicates recover 10 million Naira had drugs. Lagos eyes bonds others to fund 192.49 billion Naira deficit. Army detains civilian for seven months over vid owed Facebook video. Amoteko dismisses court for killing Okada driver, delivered him for prosecution. As well as these other stories, gunmen seize 18 traders in Edo, demand 25 million naira. 10 jailed one month for dumping refuse on Ekiti roads, and assembly threatens to order Ogu monarch's arrest. Mr. Johnson, which of the stories would you like to... Uh, to speak on let, this let, let, let's, let's start with the headline, which the Northern Elders Kuka and um, When Frederick Kuka gave his speech, um, it caused an opera when he highlighted things that uh, has happened and is happening in Nigeria, pointing out the need for us to address some of the things that is causing division and disharmony in this society. A lot of people call for his head, who are still calling for his head. Now we have seen others joining in, in raising an alarm concerning this particular issue, that is the issue of uh, equity, justice, if it is not addressed the car problem. You recall that only a fool makes the same mistakes twice. You record as if you look at the factors and the issues that led to the first civil war and the complaints of other constituent units about the lack of representation and the domination of one section of the country in the management of the affairs of this nation was what led to the first civil war. Now, you are seeing those indices being evident, and people are raising the flag because no nation can survive two civil war. And the earlier we sit down as a people and as a nation to address this issue, and the better. So it's no longer uh, uh, the lone voice of Adapuka in the forest. Other voices have joined, and they are drawing attention to it. Now Nigeria is a federation, and there's a need for the constituent unit to have a sense of belonging. And there's a need for those that have been charged with the responsibility of managing the affairs of the nation to understand that one, they don't represent a particular interest group, whether by tribe or by race or by religion. Two, they have to have an understanding that they are representing the whole nation. So everybody must be given a sense of representation and a sense of belonging. And a stitch in time saves nine. The need for us to sit down. Uh, the unfortunate thing is that this particular government, the party responsible for this government across the nation, is a party that believes in the progressive ideology. It's a party that ran on the issue of national conference, on the issue of equity, on the issue of getting everybody involved. But you know what? It's quite unfortunate that even parties that we believe do not share progressive ideology had national conference. Oh, so it's also, it's also had interesting. Um, Jonathan had his own. Mr. Now, Johnson. the APC has not had anyone that has brought people 
whether in one form or the other, to give an expression to their views as to how the affairs of this nation um, will be managed. So it's, it's quite ironic and, and, and a travesty that a party that claims to be believing in progressive ideology, a party that believes in having a sovereign national conference when it was in opposition, is totally against it. All right. And I um, think we need, can you hold on? need to sit down. Yeah, um, it's also interesting to note that the um, events that led to the, uh, now we're talking about, you know, civil war, the events that led to the first civil war um, happened also today in 1966, and we'll be bringing that up. Um, the uh, coup that led to the uh, killing of Tafar Bale will happen also today in 1966, so it feels like, you know, a conversation that has uh, come up again, you know, decades later. Um, but I, I, I would like us to also quickly speak pray, on... Pray that we never have any coup again in Nigeria. Uh, definitely. We will never have any um, I, I would any like you to also speak on the um, Amotekun call. Um, we've heard reports of um, killings, of um, you know, um, extrajudicial killings, if you can call it that, um, in the last few yeah. weeks. Um, it, it's, it's one of the fears that you know, people have always had with regards to the training of persons that you give weapons in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, uh, a lot of people might support the idea of having a security force, you know, that is, you know, for states and for certain regions. Uh, but if they don't go through the same training or the, you know, required training uh, that uh, you know, makes them respect the rights of every single Nigerian, aren't we putting ourselves back in the same problem that we've had with the Nigerian police force? It's a Nigerian thing. It has nothing to do with them. Training is a key component part of what you have said. But I'll give it. I'll give you an example. Where you work, um, where you work, uh, you've seen the way some even security people that are hired to man your gate in your place in our places of work. You see the way they react. You know, sometimes some of them show aggression. If you just keep going to some of them, you know, those of us that even work in some organization, they will have shut up before they know that you are actually working in that organization. It's 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 is a is a Nigerian thing in the sense that when people are given power, the responsibility he said power without power comes with responsibility. And I think this particular matter should be dealt with dispassionately. It should be transparent. It should be open. These people should be prosecuted. It shouldn't take any time so as to send a signal to others to let them understand that the fact that you're a law officer does not make you to be the law executioner. You, don't, you, can't, you can't be the, the police. I'm on top of, they are the executive. You can only execute. You can't adjudicate. So that is for the judiciary. And I think that, like you said, there's a need for proper training of those in Amotepo. But this particular one is a test piece. The matter should be addressed, and it should be open, it should be transparent, and it should be dealt with the dispatch. And let it said, as, serve as an example and as president for others for them to know that you cannot take laws into your hand. No, it's because people take laws into your hand and they get away with it. That's why others try it. All right, Mr. Johnson. Right now, the COVID-19 statistics in Nigeria is over 100,005. Uh, the federal government has insisted that it, it will reopen schools on Monday, January uh, 18th. Uh, but the federal government is now saying they're banning overcrowding assemblies and others on schools as they resume on Monday. Do you think they can actually properly uh, you know, ensure this? You see, we, we, are, just, we are just playing the street. Let's face the reality. They are playing the ostrich. All you need to do is to send your cameraman or you put out a drone to go all over Lagos and outside of Lagos to others and capture images for you. Um, and it will tell you the reality of our people. One, man is a social animal. There's no way you can constrain man to, when I mean man, I mean both the male and the female gender to constrain. They, they will always relate. They can't isolate. The era of basic has ended. Where me, myself, and I on a on an island being stranded. So the issue of the uh, government saying overcrowded, that's just um, a, a public statement, just um, to to assuage the feelings of of people. Overcrowding is everywhere. But you need just visit the market, visit uh, the mall, visit anywhere, anywhere. So overcrowding is issue. Now if we have one hundred thousand cases in Nigeria. You do that across the population of Nigeria, you discover that in statistics, 
that is absolutely insignificant because it's not up to uh, up to five percent. Uh, and uh, if we look at globally, as with respect to COVID-19, I think the earlier we learn to live with it, the better. Mm -hmm. like, it has come to stay. There's nothing we can do with it. In fact, they develop it. We, we learn to live with smallpox. We learn to live with different pandemic over time. And I think a lot of um, a lot of fear was created around COVID-19. Because if you look at the recovery rate, and if you look at the mortality rate, and I, before the development of the vaccine, what was the mortality rate of, uh, of, of, of someone being infected with COVID? is less than 5%. The recovery rate is about 97%. And there's no drug for it in the first instance until the vaccines were created. And what, once you contracted the disease, what did they ask us to do? You have to self-isolate and you allow your body immune system to fight it over time. All because right. I didn't see All right. All right, Mr. Johnson. Any, let's, um, let's move to the Guardian newspapers. I think uh, some of these things would also come up there um, uh, that you can share. The big one there says uh, Nigerians say no to another lockdown. Um, we also have on the Guardian, no harm must befall Kuka, can warns. Uh, Nigeria remains, uh, Nigerians rather, remain at NIMC offices as MTN targets service rollout. Uh, presidency lists military feats as Nigeria marks Armed Forces uh, Day. We also have Southwest speakers endorse Tinubu for 2023 presidency. Uh, a few others on The Guardian. January 18th resumption date for schools stands, and that's uh, by the federal government. And also, Donald Trump risks uh, post office conviction as Senate defers impeachment action. Uh, those are the big ones that you can find on the Guardian newspapers this morning. Um, Mr. Johnson, um, you can kick off anywhere, anyone that uh, gets your attention. And let's start with not to look that. You know, um, um, when we look at the lockdown and you see uh, the sudden change in, in ardent supporter of lockdown globally. I'll give you an example. His name is Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York. Last week, he said that he must open up. And yesterday, uh, the strong woman who happens to be the mayor of Chicago said that he must open up. It's, such, it's so funny that people that were key advocates of lockdown, lockdown, are now saying that, no, there should be no lockdown, we should open up the economy. You know what Andrew Cuomo said? He said, if we don't open up the economy, we have no economy to come back to. I have always been um, anti-lockdown. And I've told people, the first, we first started with 14 days, from 14 days to 21 days, 21 days to 50, uh, to, to 21 days to one month. One month till we got to six months of lockdown. And that was said that it will mitigate, it will control, it will, it will reduce the spread. And the area we open up, the economy. If you're a businessman, you run your own private business and you employ people. How do you pay them? Now, we live in a society where government is not giving us any stimulus check, either to businesses or private individuals. So what will people eat if government should lock us down? And then the palliative people they shared were, were ordered in people's, in people's um, homes and their warehouses and others were using it to celebrate their birthday. So as far as Nigerians are concerned, Judging from their experience in the past and looking at how other nations responded when they did lockdown, I'll tell you, if you do a sample sort of it, 99.9% .9 of Nigerians will say no to lockdown. So I agree with them. There shouldn't be any lockdown. Because if we keep locking down, what will we come back to? On the issue of um, Southwest Speaker endorsing Tunumbu for 2023, I wish him all the best um, of luck in his presidential ambition. But one thing that is absolutely certain is that in my own little experience that I've seen, he could be an outlier, is that everyone that has expressed his desire to be president of Nigeria did not become the president. Everyone. Every president of Nigeria that we have, I always reluctant president. I'll give you, Shagari was a reluctant president. As if we as even as a ceremonial president, did he back to be a ceremonial president? He wanted to be prime minister. And uh, Obasanjo was a reluctant president. He went to prison to bring him out. Yeah, I was a reluctant president. The man had planned to retire and go back to his academics before Pastor John went and dragged him out. They dragged Pastor John out of prison. 
Jonathan was a reluctant president. The man did not even uh, see himself as becoming president, not even seeing himself as becoming the governor. Um, you remember in 2011, when the present president cried publicly and said he would never, he would never contest presidential election again, and they went and dragged him out. So from history, from historical perspective, Every president we have had in Nigeria, I have thanked them to be reluctant president. There's nobody that aspires to be president that becomes president. In 78, when, when, uh, when M. K. Abiola uh, intended to become the president, he wished, but he never became the president. In 1993, after Papangida after banned all the presidential aspirants, that was when they went to drag Abiola to come and be the presidential candidate. As if, so I wish uh, as you had all have met him, uh, but historical <laughs> antecedent in Nigeria works against him probably will be uh, an outlier to that to that effect. But I think it's too early for us to start talking about 2023. There are many issues that should be addressed in this nation, and these people should be speaking to this particular issue on how we can bring about development, and how we can give about the miracles of democracy, and how we can assuage the feelings of people that have been that are feeling that they have been left out in the management of their affairs. All right, let, let's take a few stories from the nation newspapers before we wrap up. Yes, uh, the big one here says how 27 states forced the federal government to reopen schools, COVID-19 protocols to be enforced on teachers, pupils from Monday, and doctors warning here saying reopening schools now, dangerous. Government pushes up plan on 50 billion naira export expansion. Hospital deceived us on Canada's recovery, says Widow. Kuka is speaking here, saying Nigeria learned nothing from civil war and Joshua to earn $100 million for Fury Showdown. We also see here on the front page of the Nation newspaper, security lockdown in Washington, D.C., ahead of Biden's inauguration. Lagos targets 512 billion naira tax, 193 billion naira loan to fund 2021 budget. Amongst other stories here uh, on the front page of the Nation newspaper, but which of them would you like to speak on this morning? Well, I would like to talk on the security lockdown in Washington for Biden in operation. Human beings are short on memory. Mr. Mr. Johnson. And look at what happened. What? The network is a little um, struggling a little bit uh, this morning, Mr. Johnson. Can you hear us clearly? I can hear you clearly. Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay, yes, we can now. Go ahead, please. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Go, go ahead. Okay. I said, uh, I want us to go a bit international, talking about the Washington um, law, Washington lockdown, security lockdown in Washington. If you watch the inauguration of Donald Trump in 2017, there was every riot, burning, and destruction of properties uh, uh, in 2017 when Donald Trump, which should have sent a signal to the security agencies in America that there's a need for them to deal with the issue of the division, the deep division within their society as a result of whichever camp loses the election, putting up temper tantrums. So it did not start today. It has always been a feature of their democracy since 2000 when we had that issue, which we call um, concerning the contesting of the election. From that period, the, uh, the, the loser of the American election have always been bitter about the result of the election. So it is good that it's becoming clear that the democracy is not a perfect system, and with time we begin to to to, to nurture and, and 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 correct whatever um, deficiencies we see in 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 democracy. So uh, we are looking forward to Joe Biden's inauguration on what, the twentieth. When you say the when you say the losers, South, yeah, when you say the losers have always been bitter. Um, have they? Have you? Have, you know? Do you know of any? time when a person who lost a U.S. election reacted the way Donald Trump is reacting now, uh, from, you know, Clinton to... In 2000, uh, it took 37 days. The action, the action is a project of narrative, whether you are active, um, uh, when 
them when you contest in 2000, you recall that it took them 37 days until the Supreme Court ruled on five to four. Five Supreme Court justices that were appointed by the Republican president voted for that election that was contested in Tallahassee in Florida. And four voted, voted against the certification of that result. Five, four. That was, it was a split decision since then. And then you talk about Bush, Bush versus um, Kerry in 2004. Yes. Bush versus Kerry in 2000, in 2004. The departure you have was Obama's election. That was a departure that you have Obama's election. Uh, there was a departure. In 2016, I can show you clips and clips and clips and clips and clips. People must in Washington concerning the election. So when that thing happened in Capitol, I said, what happened in America is not new. So it's no longer, it's no news. Because prior to that, we have seen that some days before that incident last week, we saw people attacking the house of the speaker and the house of the Senate Majority Leader, Mitch McConnell, was defaced. So the signals were there. It's there, it's there, it's there, it's there. All, right. yes, I, all you just need to do is to follow it. I take a deep interest in American politics, so I follow it. I don't listen to the narrative of one media organization. I follow all media organizations so that I have an holistic view. So it's good that all right, thank um, you, Mr. Johnson. That the military, we have seen that the military also play a component part in sustaining American democracy. And uh, we hope that our own military will understand that their loyalty is not to the president, their loyalty is to the nation. Unlike Nigeria, where you have the chief of army staff and, the, and all the armed forces pledging their loyalty to the president and not to the nation. We saw in the United States of America where the security agencies were pledging right. their loyalty to the Mr. country Johnson, and we're, not to the nation. And we're I think those are the lessons. We're out of time for this conversation. Um, we're out of time. Thank you so much Thank you. Um, for your very interesting yeah. perspectives on these stories. And we look forward to speaking with you again. It's a, it's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you very much. Right. Have a wonderful day. And you have, too, sir. Happy weekend. Same to all our, Remember to stay safe. All over the world. All right. Um, I guess I actually do remember that, you know, when Donald Trump was sworn in, there, there were people who, you know, weren't very happy, you know, about it. There were, you know, small rallies here and there. Maybe not as violent as, you know, this one mm -hmm. was, but um, there's always been, you know, a little bit of those skirmishes here and there. All right, um, that's all we have for you on today in, um, um, well, in the newspaper review for today. We're going to go straight into talking about what happened on this day on the 15th of January, many, many years ago. And that comes up right after this short break. <laughs>